Me all a walk like a champion, walk like a champion. What a piece of money, girl. Hello my YouTube family. This is the fourth and final episode in our landscape renovation. And there could be more episodes because there's more to show, but I'll be honest with you, I am tired. This is a lot to do and to edit. So I'm gonna cut it short, move on to something else. And then at springtime, when everything is blooming and looking good, I'll show you the rest of it. And but thank you for watching episodes one, two, and three. If you haven't done so yet, you should go do it right now. This is one of my favorite relaxing areas. So I hope you enjoy this segment of our property as much as we enjoy it. Let's get to it. Now this garden was completely renovated and I do have many before photographs because this was one of my favorite places from day one at our home. So what we have done differently here is we have placed on the dirt white sea stones and white gravel as well and we have done that throughout this entire garden and there is another bird feeder you would have seen one in our backyard but there's another one right there and large rocks small rocks medium-sized rocks and gravel in this garden we have a potted plant there and a lot more red krona thorns and yellow and bromelia and of course there's some grass so there is also a croton over here to bring some more color to the space and I don't know what these are called, but we have them throughout our yard and they're absolutely stunning. And it's another one of those plants that I think is like art. So it grows a particular way. The leaves, each of them have their own identity and their own design. So to me, that's just artistic when it comes to plants. And we have bromelias along the border here. Now, one of the highlights of this space is what I refer to as my beanstalk. Now my beanstalk that you can see there in the background is this huge cactus plant that we have. And I'll show you a before picture because this beanstalk or this cactus plant was actually shorter than I am. And today it's probably three or four times my height. So I feel like, like Jack in the Beanstalk, it's going somewhere. It's a pity I can't crawl on it because it's filled with maca as all cactuses are or whatever the right name for maca is it's got lots of that but i call it my beanstalk because it just keeps growing and growing and it's like it's never gonna stop so here is the beanstalk and for those who have not read the fairy tale jack and the beanstalk to have an idea of what i'm talking about as i step back here and allow you to see how tall this cactus plant is Go check it out. You're not too old to read a fairy tale. So that's the beanstalk. It's the accent piece in this garden right here, as you can see. On the cactus plant, the beanstalk, we have some lighting that actually comes on at nighttime and they change colors. So it gives it some amount of character. Now this is another space that was renovated and again the border was added as you can see around this garden and it goes all the way around. So before the renovation we actually had some roses here and they did well but they weren't always blooming so we moved them a little bit to the back and then put some plants that always has color to the front. The croton the of course can't don't remember what these are called but they're very popular we have a hibiscus that's coming up right there this one that to me is another work of art as i said earlier and how could we not have bromelias and look how beautiful this one is in this space We have added these LED solar lighting, their pathway lights, all along this garden and it goes all the way 
around in this yard area and I'm gonna show you what it looks like at night it's absolutely beautiful and these lights are also available on Goffa this is what they look like in the daytime and they're LED they light up and they are solar so this is the same garden from the back so you can see we have the gravel there in white but it also has white river stones as a board yeah. another one of the artsy plant that I mentioned and there's a huge palm right here and it does provide some amount of privacy for this space but it's also decorative we have some random pots throughout this garden with bromelias and all kind of different plants and then we get to another there we go i don't have to say the name say it for me type bromelias if you're still here at this point in time below you don't have to get the spelling right because i don't know how to tell you how to spell it but these are one of my favorite hibiscus. These are layered hibiscus. You see how many layers is in this? And it's in this pale orange. And right now it's in bloom and it's sending out several. But let's keep going. We can't dilly dally or lay lay. Here is another croton over here. And this area also has, it's bordered with rocks and gravel and it has another big palm tree. So there's basically three roots of palm throughout this garden and this one is in the center. And before this palm, we have some beautiful flamingos. Now, as was said before, these flamingos are also available for sale on Goffa. So I'll put the link below, but they make gardens pop. So if you have a space, you want to put something in it, you're not sure what to put, and plants don't do well there because there's a little sun, put two birds there. It will do the job, I promise. So let's continue again. The palm is there and we're going along the garden, which is all bordered. So all of this is new. There was a garden there before, but it was not bordered by rocks, nor was it bordered by gravel and solar lighting and these birds obviously were not here and there's another huge root of palm trees here and this is nicely shading what's before it which is this so under this huge palm tree that i just showed you is this seating area that's very heavily used so this is what this pergola or pergola or trellis by now you'll realize between episode one two and three i haven't got the name right so we're gonna keep calling it trellis so again we have some solar lanterns up there they light up at night and beyond this space we have some flowering plants we have them in yellow white red and even pink up there and we have it in a hanging pot. Let me twist this pot a little bit so you can see the beauty of those plants. And beside it, we have a wind chime. And this morning when I started filming, it was very, very windy out. So you could hear the wind chime. And we added bell flowers here, but in purple. And it's on a table there. And beside that, we have the Christmas flowers, which these are surprisingly doing very well. It's now January, late January. Let's see how they do and what they look like in March. So that's a seating area. And let me step back and just show you this space. Very, very comfortable and just a nice space to sit in, hang out, to read in or just to meds. to another water feature and I don't spend a lot of time at this one but why I like it is because the water is very high so the koi they come up to feed and they are very brave these ones hmm, they're afraid of nobody when they come up you can actually touch them as they feed and interact with them so I love this pond for this
particular driveway had some unsightly electrical piping that was used to run wires to our generators from the main and it was a sore eye for a very long time and i kept thinking what should i do with it this driveway also had a wall that we had to be painting every six months to a year we are getting older and we want spaces that take less money and effort to maintain so again we had this wall that would turn brown and ugly after six months of being painted and we figured tile it because all you have to do after you have tiled it is to power wash it low maintenance so let's get to it let me show you you won't believe how we covered up the unsightly piping and i'll show you the space that we tiled in this driveway so before and I'm hoping I can find a photograph of what this looked like before because when I say unsightly, I'll show you some of the pipe in here. You see that pipe in there? That's gone back there. Well, that piping came down there and ran all the way up in this driveway, right? So we couldn't have that after doing this remodel. So we got a carpenter, of course, to take inexpensive ply board and I think that's a piece of 4b6 that he took and basically cut it up to create separators as you can see there we put gravel in the base of it and then we put dirt and then we put some plants here that are very low maintenance as you can see the mini crona thorns there crown of thorns I think okay then you have some spreaders, which will cover up the base of this eventually. And it goes all the way down with Krona thorns. This, I can't remember, sage. This is called sage. So we're gonna shape the sage and make them nice and round. So I'll have to do a follow-up episode to this video. I, it's very windy. I'm hoping you can hear me over the wind. But basically, this is now what this looks like so no more unsightly electrical piping and when these start to flower and bloom i know it's gonna be gorgeous so like Okay, so this is the wall. We got some basic tiling. We wanted something that would contrast nicely with the bricks that's in this area and the white columns and walls. And I think this tile does that well. It's very simple and it kind of has a wall look and it was cheap. Most importantly, it didn't cost a lot because I definitely wasn't gonna spend a lot of money to cover up a wall that's in the driveway. So that's the wall, nothing to see. The garden here was a lot more crowded. So it had a lot of Joseph coat and all kind of different plants. So we thinned it out a little bit and now we have some hibiscus and I can't wait for these to come up because I know they're gonna be beautiful. We have palms all the way up as the highlight i would say of the garden and then we have these which i call them leather leaf from country because the leaf is so thick they make for great edging that's evergreen and uh, again i can't wait for these to grow up and we start to trim them in a particular pattern now of course my guava tree is here so if you take a look, you'll see that there are actually some small guava because it's time for guavas in another two months. This will be dropping guavas like rain. There's a pier right there behind it. I don't know if you can see the pear tree. But would you believe that nobody in our household actually eats pear? Pear is one of my mother's favorite things to eat with bulla. She love a bulla with pear and I try to acquire the taste, but my aunt, who almost everything I do, I emulate my aunt, did not eat pear. So I ended up as a child not eating pear, and to this day I don't like it. And now I'm married to a husband, have two kids, none of them eat pear. So So this pot, which is a feature of this driveway, was also another piece that was strategically placed 
to disguise a manhole and in episode one you saw me talk a lot about hiding unsightly manholes that pop up in the middle of nowhere so this pot was there before but it was a brown color we wanted something to pop this space so of course we changed it to duco red and i think it's popping now we're about to look at a space that I've always liked and I like it because of what we've been able to use just pots to do to the space and it's basically to pop a back wall that was empty. This is an area that we play table tennis in so it's very level and because we wanted to keep it empty so we can pop out the table tennis table every now and then you wanted something along or against the wall that would give it some amount of presence but still enough to give the area overall appeal to include the empty space and i think we've been able to accomplish that but you know what i'll let you be the judge of that so these four pots, they have always been here and they have actually always been red. So there's no change in that regard, but I still wanted to show you them. And they have these plants, which they're gorgeous, but I haven't been able to get them since buying them initially. And is the meanest plant I ever seen in my life. Would it send up a sucker? And again, I'll link where we get these concrete pots from. Like I said, we play table tennis here. So it's a large flat space. You can see that, right? And against the wall, we wanted, we didn't want to put furniture here or anything here because we want to have it as flexible space so we can roll out the TT board and we're good. But we also wanted something to make the space pop without crowding it with furniture and i think these pots do a good job of that you remember those unsightly electrical piping that i spoke about they actually run down and go behind these pots and go all the way to the generator so these pots were dual purpose in that they were hiding the unsightly electrical pipe in there but it also pops a space that we know we were gonna leave empty thumbs up below if you agree now in this area we have these towering palms and there's a lot in the root and this is more for privacy because now this garden was completely redone it was actually grown up so badly that it couldn't grant access to the adjacent space so we wanted to create a pathway and to add some gravel to give it more of a modern look so let's take a look so prior to the renovation you actually could not see this area at all it was covered with palms and fern and all kind of basically miscellaneous plants everything that we had that we couldn't find a place for we took it right here and i'd had enough of it so we took out everything and we added gravel as always we covered up the manhole with something and then we kept only low plants so we have anthuriums and bromelias in this area so it will always remain this way and this area actually leads to a garden that's on the other side, but it goes below this floating staircase and it's a dual staircase that connects in the middle. But now you can go from here and get access to the garden on the other side. Let's get under this stairwell and head to the other side of this garden. And of course, there's some practical things around here like our cylinders for our cooking and for our stove but it's surrounded by beautiful plants where the flowering like these ginger these red ginger or non-flowering with beautiful leaves this is not a croton but doesn't it look gorgeous it's beside a croton take a look at that but this plant i don't know what it's called and it doesn't send out suckers either but i'm gonna try to 
transplant it so we can get it elsewhere man you see what i tell you that these videos take a lot of energy i'm sitting here on the step beside the beautiful yellow plants that i don't know the name of and just taking a break because my goodness um the walking and the videoing which is probably a good thing so this is one of those hobbies that could possibly make me fit because by the time i'm done setting up for these videos and walking around and filming i have probably burnt several calories and then the editing keeps my brain fresh so it's a hobby that helps with my fitness so i like it let's keep going enough another said another garden that's bordered by rocks and it has look at this isn't this beautiful thumbs up if you think anything i'm showing you is beautiful now i know those pots behind me were covered in episode one but i just want to show you how much the plants in them have grown up since that time so let's take a quick look and then we'll move into this phase of things you have never seen before by now you so i know by now you're familiar with this area but just look at these plants how they have sent out even blooms look at that beautiful bloom there huh and the anthuriums they're all blooming and it's not even springtime yet and the bromeliads are catching color you can tell how excited i am look at this croton right here that hasn't grown much since our video but look at these anthuriums there's the brown one there's the pink one back there and let's come around here we have the red one the pink one another croton there and these hibiscus so man I am just so excited about this new area, or I shouldn't say new area, but this trimmed down area and how it's taken off already. So again, we probably will have to do an update to show you when everything is in full bloom, hopefully in March. Now this garden comes from below the steps and it continues along the way, all the way up to the front garden so we're gonna trail it along the way on both sides and kind of show you what it looks like so let's do that for a minute and then i'll come back and tell you what the next exciting space is this area there's an old bicycle and usually those plants are blooming they're not today and again the ginger continues along this path and there's an empty space here and I was thinking, what do we do with it? So I saw this beautiful metal peacock. Isn't she gorgeous? Come on, thumbs up below, right? Peacock, P-E-A-C-O-K below in the comments if you think she's Stella. You see how she look bossy with her tail spread out like some are we? Just a dash it out so and a show off. Gorgeous. And again, there is a manhole there and we use this pot which is kind of set up uh, like it's lying down and we pop a nice bromelia in there to give it some color along the way at the edging we have white gravel and we have mini corner thorns and some other greenery that will spread and cover up this area nicely but not so much so that it goes back to what it was looking like before where you could not appreciate this area so that's it so let's keep walking along the path of this garden and again the white borders this garden all the way up and these leaves these purple and green plants they are so low maintenance and they do so well in places that don't get a lot of sun you have more bromeliads and then if anybody knows the name of this plant, I'd like to know because we have it a few places in our yard and I just think the leaf of it is art in itself. Take a look at that. Isn't that stunning? I'll tell you something. That window right there is actually my office. And as you can see, I have this view from my office and this is what I hear when I'm in my office. So I just love being in my office all the time just savoring up this sound this cool breeze and then 
and just this garden. So we're continuing up the path and I'm gonna take you along the way. And there's not much to see until we get to another water feature. So stay tuned. So from here, we get to this area. We wanted to add something to this space. So we put gravel there and we added some bromelias and some non-flowering plants. Now there's another pot here and this one is concrete as well and it's kind of lying down and we pop it with a bromelia and along this path you can see the beautiful cut stone in the background. This is actually a piece of driftwood that's there and you heard the joke about the driftwood. I don't know if it's a joke but the statement made about the driftwood in episode three and from this driftwood look at this fern. Have you ever seen this fern? Now here we go again. This is the plant that I can't figure out what the name is. By now you know I have this app on my phone that I can use to get plant names, right? And I have taken this picture and it keeps telling me it's something else. So if there's anybody here who knows what this plant is, please put the name down in the comments. Let me give you a closer look of the leaves. So below this nice plant that provides some amount of shading in this space, we have more rock gardens. And this one is, there's a path created of gravel that leads over there, but on the edges, it has dark gravel to contrast the white gravel over there and just bromelias. And again, at springtime, these all turn a very nice pink or red and pop this space very nicely. Now, beyond the path is another garden over here. And this one is shaded. And I don't know the name of these either, but I think they're stunning with the pink and the white and the green. This hibiscus here, it's huge. And it's one of those hybrid ones that have, let me see, I'm open oh my goodness you mean there's no bloom to show you the layered bloom but you know what i have taken so many photographs of this hibiscus so i'm positive that i'll be able to find a bloom to pop up right here and show you how gorgeous it is when it's in bloom. along the path of this garden are these two beautiful flamingos and they are blue in color so take a look at them and this is just to break up the space a little bit with these garden, I don't know if you call them figurines or what, but they are metal and they are available on GoFoss. So I'll pop up a link and ensure that you are able to click in the description and secure these if you like them. But this area, not much has changed. We have added gravel, cleared it up a bit because the fern had taken over this space completely. I'll, I'm sure I can find photos, but we wanted to thin it down a little bit or lighten the area. So as always, we have another pot here that's lying down and popping and we have a bromelia in it, which is a slightly different color from the others. And we have some flowers here some flowering plants for when i do my arrangements to include ginger and there's another one i'll pop up a photo because i can't remember what it's called but it's one of those flowers that's synonymous with the caribbean and jamaica that i love to use in arrangements because it's absolutely gorgeous and of course there's my rooster i don't know if you remember that video i shared on instagram he's doing very well and there's some more hibiscus that we put in this area now talk about a broken record every time i do one of these videos i say don't just plant palms because you can't eat palm make sure you have things in your yard whether it's fruits or vegetables that you can actually eat so this is one of our vegetable gardens that i'm gonna show you right here the other one is kind of off the beaten path so we won't ever see that in a video but this one is very accessible and it's doing extremely well. So although it's a vegetable garden, when we reap these vegetables, what we didn't want to have 
was an empty place with soil. So that's why the bromeliads are here bordering it. We do have scotchy. And if you watch any of my cooking videos, you'll know how much we love scotch bonnet in this house. So we have several plants here. And when they get to a certain size, we actually move them to another garden patch, but they do very well here. Actually this garden, it's red dirt and it's well fertilized. So things get big very quickly here and then we transfer them to somewhere else. Now from here, we enter another section of our yard. So by now you would have been introduced to Mama Turtle and you saw her son over the other pond, I think in episode three. And now you're gonna meet their grandchild and this is Grandbaby Turtle. So now we're at another section of this yard and this has another water feature but not as bold and bodacious as the other one. It's a little bit more modest and a little bit more quiet. And this space has been significantly renovated. Whether it's the garden, the water feature, or just the pots that have been installed and the plants have been completely transformed. I'll be able to show you some good photos with how it started, how it's going, and how it's ended. So next, I'm gonna take you to my fairy gardens. And I created these gardens about two or three years ago, but they have since been refurbished uh, because like your house, you have to refurbish it every now and then. We have to refurbish it for the fairies to live in as well, right? And this is where the foolish side of me comes out. I do allow my inner child to come out and play all the time. You should allow yours to come out as well. Don't be afraid of judgment, what people are gonna say. Your inner child is that part of you that's still pure and that is still free from the criticisms and the evil that's in this world. So here's my inner child coming out to play. So on the way to my fairy garden, let me just show you some things that were recently changed. The two pots at the front, they have always been here. The ones at the back were recently added and they were taken from a different part of our yard. They weren't red before, they were a brown looking color. So now they have been painted red. Next door is my favorite space. This is my fairy garden. There are three pots in this area, all concrete pots, and in each pot is its own fairy world. So let me take you into this world of the make-believe. Welcome friends, that's where we're gonna start. And of course you have this first home here, and this is George, that's the fairy. And they all have names, of course there is baby dragon and some other housing in this garden there's a lighthouse although this is really not a beach fairy garden but i didn't have anywhere else to put it and i think it looks good in there with a red pot what do you think so it has a pathway and fencing in the garden and it leads to the mansion in this fairy garden and then those are the other houses so like I said, I love connecting with my inner child. And here is another fairy garden, and this concept is slightly different. Now see, my things are out of order here. And there's baby turtle. So here we go. There is actually a black mermaid right there. And uh, again, you have housing. That one says believe. I think I would be living in there whenever I get into this world. And there's a pond there. This fairy actually fell in. I wonder if she's still alive. We may have to resuscitate her, but we'll come back later on. She looks a little bit pale, but anyway, moving on. Over here, we have a stallion with joy. 
and we step back and this is our second fairy garden so let me take you to the third one which i'm still waiting to put some things in to renovate it this one is a little bit more rough around the edges and you see her right there looking a little bit depressed it's probably because i haven't fixed up this one as good as i should so the housing is here that's the main house in the garden and it has several other houses it has a bridge where there's a river or that's the impression of a river but like i said i need to do some work and there's the deer she's falling over let's fix her right there and that's the fairy garden now these three pots with each garden is located in what was a fountain so i'll show you a before picture you may actually prefer what was there before the fairy gardens because sometimes i myself look back on it and i think oh wow this actually looked nice why did i change it but then it was water cascading over this fountain and it took a lot of electricity so now i'm sure you got why we had to change it to a smaller pond but now we still have water there but it's in moderation so from a utility perspective the cost is being capped there is our little fountain and it has the shape of an umbrella let's zoom in closer there we go and it does provide some amount of you know relaxation from a sound perspective and it's bordered by those bamboo plants and some additional cocoa plants right there and crown of thorns and of course there's white sea stones in this area as well as some grass to create a bordering around this garden so the fairy gardens are somewhat the highlight of this space but it does have a fountain here and we don't have any fish in here because as i said in episode one the cats have a way of murdering the fish that we have in shallow ponds and this one is a shallow pond and i don't want to have to take out a cat and bad blessing take me for the rest of my life so prevention better than cure remove the fish i won't have any issues with the cats also got some renovation but not as much as the other side of this space so i'll just quickly show you what's here and tell you what's new and what's old or what changed so this pot was always here what's new is the bromelia that's in it which is an unusual breed of bromelia and also the flowering cascading plants that have been added as you can see right there so. now what's also new is this border we decided to border this garden with rocks and white gravel to and that helps to pop the red pot in the corner here these red bell flowers are in this pot so it's like a little pop you don't expect to see this in a corner. There goes a beautiful hibiscus, but you don't expect to see this in a corner here, but look at that. And behind it, again, I can't wait for these to start growing and flowering because this one is gonna be a beauty as it starts to protrude and come out of its little space there that it's occupying. And this here is actually something we took out of a water feature and didn't have anything to do with it so we decided to make it into a plant stand and we have some white bell flowers popped on it in a pot and it really just complements the red nicely in my opinion so We 
have come to the end. It's the finale. This has been a fun episode to film because I filmed some of my favorite things. And like there's more to film and more to show, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm exhausted. This does take a lot of time and a lot of effort to film and to edit. And it's not like I don't think you're worth the time and effort, but I want to do some other things. And then when it's springtime and things are flowering and blooming, I'll show you the other spaces and just recap some of these spaces that would have grown up by then. But I am just so grateful to God that we have been given opportunities that has led to us living in this kind of a space. And for me, it replicates the space that I grew up in. And despite all the challenges that I share in my book, my childhood was extremely happy. And I wanted to bring it back into this space because you see everything that's happy about your past, figure out ways to introduce it into your current space because that energy will just transform you and take you to a new level. So I have shown you episodes one, episodes two, episodes three, and this is episode four and final. I'll show you more later on, but for right now, that's it. And if you have not seen the other three episodes, please go and watch it and let me know your thoughts. And if you have already seen all three episodes, thank you so much for your loyalty and your commitment. I sincerely appreciate it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. I read all comments, at least as of this moment, I do. If it's something private, don't DM me on Instagram because I very rarely get to respond to those. But you can also look in the description. You will see a WhatsApp number that I try to manage. Your answers won't be prompt, but I will respond and that number should be used by subscribers only. So again, thank you. I am so grateful if you are here until this time with this video. And I hope you enjoyed what I shared and the message I want to leave you with is this. Ensure that you remain connected with your inner child. You saw how excited I got when I was showing you my fairy gardens. And that's because that part of me where I was happy, joyful, where I didn't have to worry about judgment from what I said or what I did, that part of me still lives on. And it's probably one of the reasons why I love nature so much because I get to interact with things from my childhood and having grown up in rural Jamaica where there's so much bush and greenery and river and water and birds and bees and flora and fauna, it's hard not to want to live that way as an adult. So Don't be afraid that somebody's gonna say, oh, she's so immature, she behaved like a pitney too much, or why is she doing that? Forget people's judgment. Remember, it can't pay your bills. Allow your inner child to flourish because your inner child is that part of you that does not fear judgment. That inner child is that part of you that still has those big dreams because it hasn't woken up to the reality of the cruel people that live in this world. So that inner child is not sensitive to those things. So it's there and it just flourishes and what you will find is that it nourishes your soul so allow your inner child to come out and play every now and then you go outside get wet in the rain dance as they say like nobody's watching sing like nobody's listening and just embrace life like every day is your last all the best my rock stars stay safe until next time until next time.